Dr. Masakazu Fuji's hospital was no longer on the bank of the Kyo River. It was in the river. After the overturn, Dr. Fuji was so stupefied and so tightly squeezed by the beams gripping his chest that he was unable to move at first. And he hung there about 20 minutes in the dark in the morning. Then a thought which came to him that soon the tide would be running in through the estuaries and he and his head would be submerged inspired him to fearful activity. On the bridge, he encountered a friend, a doctor named Machi, and he asked in bewilderment, what do you think it was? Dr. Machi said, it must have been a Molotovano Bonacago, a Molotov flower basket, the delicate Japanese name for the bread basket of self-scattering cluster bombs. At first, Dr. Fuji could see only two fires, one across the river from his hospital site, and one quite far to the south. But at the same time, he and his friend observed something that puzzled them, and which, as doctors, they discussed, although there were, as yet, very few fires. Wounded people were hurrying across the bridge in an endless parade of misery, and many of them exhibited terrible burns on their faces and arms. Why do you suppose it is? Dr. Fuji asked. Even a theory was confident that day, and Dr. Machi stuck to his. Perhaps because it was a Malatofano Anacago flower basket, he said. There has been there had been no breeze earlier in the morning when Dr. Fuji had walked to the railway station to see his friend off. But now, brisk winds were blowing every which way here on the bridge. Here on the bridge, the wind was easterly, and new fires were leaping up, and they spread quickly. And in a very short time, terrible blasts of hot air and showers of cinders made it impossible to stand on the bridge anymore. Dr. Machi, ran to the far side of the river and along a still unkindled street. In the biggest hospital, that of the Red Cross, only six doctors out of 30 were able to function and only 10 nurses out of more than 200 were able to function. Dr. Sasaki and his colleagues at the Red Cross Hospital watched the unprecedented disease unfold and at last evolved a theory about its nature. It had, they decided, three stages. The first stage had been all over before the doctors even knew they were dealing with a new sickness. It was the direct reaction to the bombardment of the body at the moment when the bomb went off by neutrons, beta particles, and gamma rays. The apparently uninjured people who had died as mysteriously in the first few hours or days had succumbed in this first stage. It killed 95% of the people within a half mile of the center, and many thousands who were farther away. The doctors realized in retrospect that even though most of these dead had also suffered from burns and blast effects, they had absorbed enough radiation to kill them. The rays simply destroyed body cells, caused their nuclei to degenerate, and broke their walls. 
Many people who did not die right away came down with nausea, headache, diarrhea, malaise, and fever, which lasted several days. Doctors could not be certain whether some of these symptoms were the result of radiation or nervous shock. The second stage set in 10 or 15 days after the bombing. Its first symptom was falling hair. Diarrhea and fever, which in some cases went as high as 106, came next. 25 to 30 days after the explosion, blood disorders appeared. Gums fled. The white blood cell count dropped sharply. And petechiae appeared on the skin and mucous membranes. 